So I'm Nancy Hireman. And I'm Brenda Kazire. And today we're going to show you how to get somebody moved up in bed once they've got themselves all kind of crumpled down in bed, which is really common, and we already have the draw sheet on. So I'm going to walk, Nancy's going to do it as I walk you through it. So as you can see, Dan's feet are all pressed up against the bed. That's really uncomfortable. It can cause bed sores on the feet. His hips are um, down in the bottom. His, he's just not in a comfortable position up in bed. So the first thing Nancy's going to do is she's going to... I just want to say one thing. And the reason we're going to teach you how to do this with one person is because there's plenty of times you family members are all by yourself trying to take care of someone. So you need to know how to do these maneuvers when you don't have a helper. So the first thing she's going to do is she's going to flatten the head of the bed. Notice there's not a lot of stuff around, so there's room to move the bed. Okay, in, in our homes, with all of our favorite things around, there's lots of stuff around. The next thing she do is she's going to unlock the bed. The locks on the bed are usually one on there's one on the bottom and one at the top, and they're always on opposite corners of each other. And if the flip down is locked, flipped up is unlocked. She's going to go to the bottom of the bed and she's going to pull it away from the wall. She's going to lock the bed again. This is really important. Now here's the key. She's going to take the bed control and she's going to raise the foot of the bed only, leaving the head of the bed flat. Because she's one person, he's a big strong guy, so she's going to have to use gravity to help pull him up. So once she's going to pull the pillow up there, uh, she's going to straighten the pillow, and then once she has the pillow straightened, she's going to get good footing. She's going to grab the draw sheet by each shoulder. It's nice and stuck and close in. I'm going to say one other thing, and um, if he was well enough that he could help me, he could bend his knees too. And push with his feet. Push with his feet, but we're going to pretend that he's very ill. He can't do anything. So, and when she's ready, she's going to pull up towards the head of the bed. And of course, I am also going to say, I'm going to move you towards the head of the bed because it can be surprising and we don't want to shock our patient. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, three. And now, Dan is nicely high in the bed. I can adjust his pillow. Again, we want to make his head supported. Didn't know I my own strength, got him up so high. You're going right. to pull But all. he will scooch down again. Yes. So now you can see how he's in a much better position. And now I can use this electric bed to either leave, I, might, I think I'll even leave his legs up slightly because that will prevent him from sliding once I get his head up. So we'll just put the legs down part way. You want to keep the knees up just a little bit because it's the natural for the body to scooch down once you have the head of the bed up. Um, so having a little bit of lift, it's called tacoing, so he doesn't slide down as far. Now he's in a great person, position. He we were able to get him up in bed. Now, if you have a, if you have a, you know, a, a small space, you can put the head of the bed back to the wall, which I'll do. But if you have a nice big room like we do here, you can even leave the bed out from the wall, just about 18 inches, just like we did. But in this case, you're going to put him right back and lock your bed up again. 